Hello everyone. So welcome to this new session. So in the last class we have uh, we were continuing with the concepts of module three and we have solved one important problem, right? So now let's solve one more. Let's see uh, one more important problem that is very very important. Okay. So the question here is a very long hollow conductor of inner radius a uh, and outer radius b is located along the z axis and carries the current i. Uh, in the z direction okay so so the, here we can see that the current distribution in this case they have given it as uniform so we need to determine the magnetic field intensity at any point in space okay so according to the question let's try to uh, draw one uh, simple uh, surface that is i have uh, taken one uh, three dimensional surface here with axis z x y and z okay and they have told that a very long hollow con hollow conductor of inner radius a and outer radius b. So we can say see that. So they have given the inner radius as well as the out, outer radius. So from this assumption, we can tell that we have two conductors. That is two concentric cylinders. I have drawn here two concentric cylinders. You can see here. Okay. So one cylinder I have drawn it uh, here like this. Inside one outer cylinder, one inner cylinder is there with the inner radius as b. Okay. And with with the inner radius as a here. You can see here. And here one uh, outer uh, cylinder which has the radius uh, as uh, outer radius as b, and along the z direction I have uh, uh, drawn the current i here since in the question they were mentioned that it carries the current i in the z direction. Okay. So also in the one more point they are mentioned it has the current distribution is uniform. Okay. So we need to determine the magnetic field intensity at a point in at any point in space. Okay. So now first thing what we need to be writing is the formula J Z. That is equal to i divided by pi into b square minus a square. Then you uh, one condition that assume the field lines to be in concentric circles. Okay, so yeah, I have drawn two concentric cylinders with the uh, upper part of the cylinders has the concentric circles as you can see here in the figure. So now here h phi, the h phi component has constant magnitude along each circle. Okay, so we can see that this h phi component, uh, it uh, it is basically the magnitude of the upper uh, circle okay with an angle of phi so it has the magnitude along each circle okay so now let us consider three regions of interest that is case one rho is lesser than a okay for this rho is lesser than a what will be happening is for no lesser than uh, rho lesser than a the current enclosed is zero okay therefore uh, according to the formula that is uh, uh, nine integral of h dot dl is equal to i according to ampere's law we have seen it in point form so that would be equal to zero. Therefore, uh, since uh, h dot dl is equal to i, which is equal to zero, so we can conclude that the magnetic field intensity h is equal to zero, since uh, the quantity dl is equal to zero. That is change in length. So this is all about the first case. So let's consider now case two. That is uh, the row or the inner uh, the radius lies between a and b. Okay, that is uh, rho is a uh, uh, Lesser than a but greater than b, that is, it lies between a and b. So, again, take the same formula that is line integral of h dot dl is equal to current enclosed, that is i enclosed, okay. But we know that i is equal to surface integral of j dot ds, okay. We have one more relation, right? i is equal to surface integral of j dot ds, okay. Here, since j is equal to jz because the uh, current density is along the z direction in the question since they mentioned it, so now what we can say is i is equal to surface integral of i divided by pi into b square minus a square uh, the since j is equal to jz and jz we have mentioned in the question right here uh, in the first assumption that is jz is equal to i, I by pi uh, into b square minus a square so i'm just substituting the value that here and in place of ds we need to substitute the this value that is rho d rho d phi a z vector okay so now we are again we have a z vector and a z vector so a z vector dot a z vector is equal to 1 the dot product of any two same vectors, any two same unit vectors would be equal to one. Okay. So now, so now see here the uh, next step. Wait once. Uh, so now you can see the next step here. That is i is equal to. I am taking this uh, constant term outside outside of the integral. That is i by i into b square minus a square. I have taken it outside. And the limits are from a to rho, uh, rho d rho, and again 0 to 2 pi for d phi. Okay, it's a 
uh, still limits that is it won't change that is 0 to 2 pi for d5 i have told you many many times so now i is equal to i by pi this is i enclosed okay i enclosed is equal to i applied that is the current applied divided by pi into b square minus a square then uh, take the integral of this row term that is row square by 2 and uh, limits are from a to rho and here uh, the integration of d phi is 5 and the limits are from 0 to 2 pi then uh, i by pi into b square minus a square okay into b square mi uh, minus a square and uh, uh, apply the limits that is uh, upper limit minus lower limit that is rho square by uh, 2 minus uh, uh, a square by 2 so that uh, what we will be getting here is rho square minus a square by 2 okay so here 2 2 will be getting cancelled here and again 2 pi minus 0 is 2 pi upper limit minus lower limit here we will get 2 pi so here we got 1 2 and here we can cancel 1 that 1 2 so here 1 pi and this pi gets cancelled so remaining i enclosed here we got it as uh, i is equal to uh, i enclosed is equal to i into rho square minus a square divided by b square minus a square so therefore since uh, we have assumed the condition that line integral of h dot dl is equal to i enclosed according to ampere's law so therefore we can directly write it as line integral of h dot dl is equal to i into rho square minus a square divided by b square minus a square okay so now here in place of h now take the component as h5 okay and take that h5 outside out of the integral h5 into line integral of dl is equal to i into rho square minus a square divided by b square minus a square okay then uh, h5 is equal to two, uh, h5 into 2 pi rho and so in place of uh, line integral of dl substitute the uh, uh, dl length that is 2 pi rho okay is equal to again the same term so therefore h5 is equal to i divided by bring this 2 pi rho down so i by 2 pi rho oh, uh, in, uh, into rho square minus a square divided by b square minus a square so this is the answer which we get for h5 amperes per meter in case of case 2 okay whenever the row lies between a and b this is the term which we get for h5 okay so similarly for case 3 uh, for row greater than b that is row the radius would be greater than the outer cylinder radius outer cylindrical uh, radius so therefore line integral of h dot dl is equal to i enclosed same uh, take the same condition and take this h uh, replace it by h5 and in uh, line integral of dl is equal to 2 pi rho is equal to i enclosed so therefore h5 is equal to i enclosed divided by 2 pi rho okay so then what we will be getting so here uh, this is the final answer we are getting if you want you can substitute the value of i enclosed which you have got here okay that is uh, i into rho square minus a square divided by b square minus a square so you can substitute that value here okay after that if we uh, if we write this this will be i into rho square minus a square divided by 2 pi rho into b square minus a square so that's the answer which we are getting it for uh, h5 okay in case of case 3 okay so here uh, in case of case 2 and case 3 the same answer we are getting that is for h5 this only answer we are getting okay you cannot see any difference if you want you can substitute the value of i enclosed and you can see it okay so yeah this was one important problem hope you understood this problem okay so we'll get to the next important concept before that uh, if you want you can just uh, uh, write down the question and uh, see the problem once again very carefully pause the video and you can refer it okay yeah so now let's get to the next concept okay so this is the next concept here that is Stokes theorem okay this is again a very very important concept so please listen uh, listen when i'm explaining very carefully so this concept is very very important okay so the next concept here is Stokes theorem okay so they might be asking the statement of Stokes theorem that you can uh, Google search it and find it out. Okay, Stokes theorem. So here I'm just going to explain the logic about this Stokes theorem here. Okay. So now let's see the Stokes theorem. Before uh, analyzing the Stokes theorem, draw a rough uh, surface surface diagram here as I've drawn. So I'll draw one grid here, and after that we take any from any one point uh, of the square which uh, is created by the grid. Uh, take on uh, an a n vector uh, outside. Then here, uh, for a particular square, uh, in a, what to say, in a particular clockwise or anti-clockwise direction, uh, mark the surface uh, areas that is delta s on all the four sides of a single square of the grid. And this is whole, this whole thing is called as the surface area. You can name it as s here. And this is one rough diagram for Stokes theorem. 
so now here from ampere's law we we were getting a relation from ampere's law that is del cross h is equal to j okay from maxwell's equation we know that from ampere's law this is the relation which we are obtaining so now consider the surface h which is broken into incremental surface delta s okay so which i have told you this is one surface s and it is broken into the incremental surfaces of delta s so now applying curl to one of the incremental surface of delta s that is so now for this equation line integral of h dot dl okay divided by delta s so we need to apply the curl that is del cross h del cross h of n that is it, uh, this n indicates the right hand normal okay yeah. so this is one uh, relationship you can write it down line integral of h dot dl divided by delta s is equal to del cross h uh, suffix n okay so now the above equation can also be written as line integral of h dot dl of uh, delta s divided by delta s is equal to del cross h dot a n vector okay so why this dot product we are using it because so here since we are taking the curl to one, to one of the incremental surface so now the curl is for this whole surface and this uh, n in indicates the right hand normal so this a cap n here it is marked from a single in incremental surface right so now with respect to that single incremental surface we are taking this curl okay that is del, uh, del cross h relation so that's why we are writing del cross h dot a n vector okay so now what we need to be doing is uh, I take this uh, delta s to the other side so that is line integral of h dot dl is equal to uh, del cross h uh, dot a n vector into delta s so now we can neglect this a n vector okay, since we have an incremental surface here which is called as delta s so this a n vector is of no use now okay so now uh, line integral of h dot dl is equal to del cross h into delta s this dot product also goes okay since uh, it's a dot product so uh, we have we don't have any unit vector here so so we can consider zero okay zero dot a n vector it's again zero so we can so this a n vector vanishes so that's why we are getting del cross h into delta s so therefore line integral of h dot dl is equal to since we have this delta s here so now in order to convert that delta s into ds so we need to be taking the surface integral so therefore line integral of h dot dl is equal to surface integral of del cross h dot ds so again this dot product comes again since we are taking the surface integral so this is the relation of stokes theorem which is very very important this formula you need to by heart very very important so uh, related to this formula we are going to solve uh, one or two important problems okay that is line integral of h dot dl is equal to surface integral of del cross h dot delta s okay so this is the relation of stokes theorem so statement i have not provided okay if you, if you it is available in the google you can search it out and you all you can refer any other video okay so here we have i have just shown the theory part of the the logical implementation of the stokes theorem okay so please you can if you want you can note this down here okay so please pause the video and refer it and uh, that's all for this session so hope you uh, understood some of the concepts and one problem which we have discussed in this session so please like share subscribe and since exams are coming near okay so please uh, do refer the videos and please do share it with your friends the detailed explanation which we provide uh, it's not available anywhere so please like share subscribe and also you can refer our playlist we have uh, solved all the model question paper solutions of this subject control system principles of communication and microcontrollers everything we have solved it and kept it to you all you can refer our channel the playlist would be appearing on the right of your screen now yeah so you can see the playlist here so please uh, do like share subscribe and uh, stay updated to this channel okay thank you